Tonight we're taking a look at the Yeelight color bulb. Uh, there's APIs and there's a bunch of different stuff um, that you can use to kind of interact with these. So I thought, what the heck, what does it take to actually interact with it directly? Um, so uh, once you actually get it set up, the light behind, I don't know if you can see it up there, you should be able to see it, is already set up. It's on the wireless network as you can see. So I figured I'd kind of give you a, a view of how this is set up now. So I've got my uh, PFSense firewall, i got a Dell Power Connect 5324 set up, i got some VLAN set up. The one in particular that we're running on is dot .9, which is a 1010.9 uh, network. We can see we got the Razer laptop, which is actually not the Razer at the moment. Uh, and then we got my wireless router set up, and then this is about the best thing I could find really quickly, just to indicate a bulb. Uh, these are the addresses as such. Uh, 116 is not correct for this, um, but that's pretty much how we're set up now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look down yonder. Oh, come on. And basically, first we need to find the device. So we're going to use a UDP, which is unicast, on the following broadcast address using the following port uh, 1982. Um, traditionally, uh, SSDP is basically run on port 1900. Um, the other thing to note about this is that the source port that you actually send a request from needs to be the listening device that the bulb is going to actually respond to. So looking at that, we can send the following request. Basically, there's a little bit more to that request we'll go over in a second. Um, and the response will basically respond to the source IP and the source port, which is the following. And the device sends back the location info, the firmware, uh, some of the functions and different things like that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to broadcast for the device um, and you have to do it exactly, otherwise it doesn't respond. It'll just more or less uh, ignore the request. So we'll go ahead and do that. Once we get the information from the device back, We'll use that information to initiate a TCP connection with it. And then we'll send a couple different commands and you guys should be able to see that on the webcam. So let's uh, let's go ahead and take a peek at this. So we've got two command prompts set up. Overlap, SLA, we'll just do that. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is um, if you do listening, it's actually going to not work properly unless you bind it to the actual address like so. So we'll go ahead and get that set up. And then to do the actual broadcast, it's gonna be the following address and port. And basically, we just need to run this syntax here. And because this is Windows and you know the way it handles new lines and blah, 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 we're just going to paste this in here in a way that it will send most of the data in the first, um, I don't know how you describe. It'll send these all with the return and new lines, and the new line will be the end of the UDP packet in this case. So we'll go ahead and start this. We should be able to just paste this in here. It should basically take care of it. And the device responds fairly quickly. And basically, this is the only information we care about. I mean, if you are actually gonna go any further with this, all this info is very useful. Um, but for what we're going to do, we've already kind of plucked out what we need. So we're going to go ahead and take this address here. We're going to copy that. We're going to go over here. We're going to cancel out of this because we don't need it anymore. We're going to say NCAT this address. We're going to give it a space for that. We're going to specify this as the T for TCP and C. And that should be pretty much all we need. So what we can do now is we can kind of run some of these different uh, commands I picked up that were actually coming from the app. So, and uh, I'm sorry, the, the .NET API uh, SDK. So we can go ahead and copy this guy. This will put it in the flow. As you can see, there you go. It responds with the ID six, result is okay. So we got that going on. So if we want to stop it now, we can run this following command. We can stop it. And if we want to, I don't know what that, you know, power it off, we can do that. Boom, we're sitting in the dark now. And now we can go ahead and uh, 
kick it back on and boom there you go kind of fun kind of neat um so the way i saw it is it looked like you had to have these sdks and you had to do all this other stuff but really it's just json data over tcp and as far as the sssdp service um it's kind of it's kind of a loose standard i would say uh the way it usually works but it's really not bad I had a Wireshark set up. I would actually show you the packets and the communication that we just did. But unfortunately, I'm having issues with uh, Wireshark picking up my interfaces on my laptop. Uh, I do have it working on the Razer, but long story short, um, I ended up just running it on here just due to the mic and the webcam and such. So kind of a fun little thing. Um, I guess if you were to look at the API docs and kind of figure out what the uh, color codes are to do the conversion, from RGB to an integer, and you were to kind of, you know, set these requests up, you could kind of do some fun stuff. But if you were to kind of just predetermine from the app or from the SDK what you wanted, captured that request, you could relay it. If it's just going to be like a, you know, you just kind of kind of loop it and do different things with it, then you could kind of just set that up and make a really simple application to, to interact with this without having to do all this extra stuff and have these massive libraries to do simple things. So, pretty neat. Pretty neat. Anyhow, uh, kind of like I said, wish I had Wireshark. It'd be kind of neat to kind of see how um, how all the communication actually took place. But, you know, this will give you a pretty good idea, I guess. Um, and that's pretty much what we did. So, we initiated that connection. We're holding on it. And then we're listening on the other one for the broadcast address and then you would just send a couple different commands so start the uh, I forget what this stands for here but it's kinda like a a cycle flow and then there's just kinda like off and on there's a bunch of other different things you can do um, but you know for now I thought that was kind of a neat little video so if any of you end up getting one of the Ulite LED color bulbs they're kinda fun let's see if I can show you what it looks like I don't know if you'll be able to see that but that's pretty much what it is. I don't know how expensive they are, um, but they're pretty cool. I don't know if they're as good as uh, some of the other ones out there on the market, but I think it's pretty nice. It's pretty bright, too, so pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you guys in the next one.